Okay, now we're going to cover the uh, Betis gas over oil hydraulic actuator. Um, these are mostly installed on mainline valve applications. Um, when you get one of these, first of all, um, it is imperative that we know what valve this is going to fit on because this valve is manufactured without a bracket. We have learned how to fix that if we find that the valve is not actually a Cameron 8 inch, but in fact a Grove 8 inch or a Delta or a KF or something of that nature. But again, gas over oil. Um, you'll notice that it has an operational cabinet that once you open it up, uh, inlet air supply comes in from the back, which I'll show you at a later point, but it comes in to a high pressure 1301 style um, regulator with relief. Um, these really need under um, attached to valve application, they need 300 pound minimum supply pressure coming to them. Um, so if somebody has put uh, some type of pre-cut, um, either make sure that you can get that pre-cut up to 300 PSI or just remove the pre-cut. You do not need it because this will take high pressure gas and cut it to the appropriate point. What you're going to find inside is you're going to find two pneumatic control devices. Both of them are clearly marked. This is closed. This is open. Um, and you're going to find two hydraulic operation. This is from um, manual override operations where for some reason you don't have gas supply. Um, and then you have your pump operation here and the handle to pump that is located beside the, um, the door. Um, this for, uh, this is a uh, switch mechanism for the hydraulic units to work. This unit must be uh, lifted. Uh, which puts you into um, hydraulic or uh, manual override operation, you'll notice that you cannot close the cabinet with that enacted. To go back to the normal operation, you switch of that nature. Okay, we've moved to the back side of the unit. Uh, here's where your uh, position indication switch is. These are your opening and closing solenoids so that gas control can open or close this valve. It is all pre-wired to the terminal strip that's located inside the position switch. These are the hydraulic tanks that are holding the uh, fluid. Uh, if you were to see the fluid levels, hypothetically, this one would be at about this point, and this one would be down at about this point, so that it, as the valve is operated, fluid goes through, goes into the system, comes to this side, and then vice versa. As you can tell by our connection, this is the um, inlet supply gas point um, and that's pretty well the back end of the actuator um, all set up all pre-wired everything the only thing electrically you have to come into the um, position box to wire for both the solenoids and the position switches well, a couple of other items that I want to point out on the back. First of all are the metering valves. Uh, one's located here, one is located here. Uh, those 
increase and decrease the speed of opening and closing um, the valve. So if you think the valve is closing too quickly, um, you can turn down on it, thus reducing the amount of flow, or vice versa, if you think it's too slow, you can open it up some. The one other point that I wanna make is the pressure exhaust, the gas exhaust from on top of the hydraulics. Some of you, of course, are aware this is one of the points where we have had uh, some hydraulic fluid discharge. Uh, we're working on um, remedying that situation, but that is through this point right here on this particular size unit, it, but it will always look of that type. Okay, back to this side of the actuator. Uh, again, these are the pneumatic operation points. Uh, gas control is not involved. Uh, you have determined that you want to change this uh, position of the valve. Uh, currently, the valve is in the open position as shown by the monitor. Unfortunately, you can't see that on the back side now. You could look at the previous video and see that. But you simply grab the closed indication and you push forward not sure whether you can hear it but the valve is currently going to the closed I can tell that it's gone to the closed position because I could hear the valve or the actuator go to the stop point so now, if you were able to see the monitor in the back, it would indicate closed, which it does. And I now want to open the valve back up. I go to the opposite. Again, both of these are clearly marked closed and open. And I push, and this is gas pressure that is now moving the valve to the open or closed position, in this case, open. The valve's now in the open position and you can sit here and move it back and forth as many times as you would like, as long as you have supply pressure. In the event that you do not have supply pressure, then, and you need to use hydraulics, you would drop to the lower point. Remember, we would come up to the top. You can hear the isolation, and at that point, the, um, the units, the hydraulic indicators are ready to be used. The valve is in the open. These are both again clearly marked. This says closed. This says open. The valve's in the open position. You grab the lever and you I am going to have shoulder surgery in the next few weeks. But you simply move the lever up. You'll notice that the hydraulic handle move down and you begin to pump and you pump Hopefully, ah, we're getting close. <clears throat> you can tell by the fact that the, um, the handle stopped. You can look around, you can see that the monitor um, is gone to the closed position. Um, and 
as long as this handle is in this position, that's where the valve is going to stay. Um, to move the valve back to the other side, you simply pull this lever, move that lever up, and start the process again. We're now back to the other position. We move the unit back. We remove the handle. We close the unit. Um, the handle goes back onto the uh, this uh, unit here. Now, gas control has um, taken back over for this valve, or you must use these two units here. That's the gas overall hydraulic unit.